Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. At the beginning of the COVID epidemic, I heard word of a fellow that had wood to uh, give away. He happened to be a wood carver and he had salvaged this plum burl from a tree uh, a couple of years earlier, uh, I think in 2017. And since he was moving a long way away to get a new teaching position, uh, he had to give it up. So his loss, my gain, thank you. Uh, but I decided to make from this piece, it was out here, a cross grain box. Uh, this one is uh, a very simple design. Uh, previously I had made a very complex maze one for my granddaughter. This is for my wife and she doesn't like the complex mazes, but she does like a little security to the box. So in this one, it does have a maze insert, but it is very simple to open. It's like this. It's just a little twist, a little bit more of a twist, and up, and it locks. So it uh, will preserve the goodie that she has inside here, but not from a very determined goodie thief. So today, let's make this cross grain box. Remember, the Christmas Ornament Challenge is coming up in November, so stay tuned. This plum burl wood came from a woodcarver who moved away due to COVID. His loss is my gain. It has been drying for four years, more than enough in this climate. It is a collection of weird shapes, beautiful only to a woodcarver. I cut off a section about 4x4x3. Four by four by I think live center pressure against a closed chuck jaws should be sufficient. For a, while, for a while, I rough round it and cut a tenon for a solid mount. Once I have a tenon, I flip it around to mount it securely into the jaws. After cutting yet another shallow tenon on the other end, I measure and mark for where I can split the wood. Now I can part the wood in two and clean up the end. Off camera, I cut a shallow mortise to fit the bottom portion of my insert. With the top portion now mounted into my lathe, I want to hollow it for the top insert. I am first using a Forstner bit. I do not want to go too deep since the center point goes even further. I need to sharpen this bit. There's a bit of smoke from the bit and the dry wood. Then switch to a box scraper. With the center already removed, the box scraper makes it easy to widen the hole bit by bit and to go a little deeper. Now let me introduce a new tool. This is a small metal lathe, a Grizzly G0768 with a digital readout and which is a DRO. With a special spindle adapter, I can mount my wood chucks to this lathe. Wood tolerances are not nearly like those from metalworking. Still, this lathe excels at straight cuts. It is much slower than on a wood lathe and I would not like to cut a smooth curve on a metal lathe. This is where my wood lathe excels. With the DRO, I can dial in to close tolerances for the insert. All this is possible on my wood lathe, but it is still a cut, try, cut, try process, and so on.
Back at the wood lathe, I'm working on the bottom portion. It is mounted with an expansion hold in the mortise I cut for the insert. That mortise is shallow, therefore I am keeping the live center in place as long as I can. With most of the excess wood removed, I mark for another expansion mortise on the side that will become the bottom. This is very tight quarters with the live center in place. Finally, I can refine with my skew. Then sand and apply fric shellac friction polish while I can still have it on the lathe. Next, I can flip the bottom around and mount it again in the new mortise. Off camera, I made a double loose tenon. One side fits the bottom, the other side fits the top. With this, I can mount the two pieces at the same time. I like it this way because I can shape them at the same time. I thought I might have to remove the live center, so I wrapped it with masking tape. That turned out to not be necessary once I remembered the beautiful mortise on the inside. I like simple shapes. This one will have a broad cove on the side. I also start the top side, then sand the side, but did not apply finish yet. Now for that mount, I thought may require the masking tape. Instead, these long, deep jaws expand nicely into the center. No problem, now to do an OG-inspired curve. After sanding, shellac friction polish on the last remaining raw wood. I thought about putting a finial on the top, but with a finial, people might be tempted to lift off the top with the finial. Instead, the simple maze requires a partial turn, a direct lift up, then an opposite rotation until it stops, and then an easy lift, direct lift off. It is a great small box. The plum wood is pretty, and the cavity is perfect for a small goodie. The maze will foil the casual thief, but not a dedicated thief. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running, and I will see you next week with another wood turning video.